All right. So for this particular video, our instructions say to solve the equation using any method. So if I'm taking a look at this example that we have here, it's telling us that we can use any method. So we need to take a look at the problem and try and figure out what would be the best way to approach this problem. Now when I'm looking at this problem, we are looking at an equation. I do notice that every term that we have in this equation is a fraction. And if we have a lot of fractions in a problem, in an equation that we're trying to solve, personally, I think that the best way to go about it is by clearing fractions. We want to try and clear fractions, which means we want to get rid of the fractions to try and make this problem a little bit easier to solve. Now, there's one step in order to clear fractions, and that is to multiply the entire equation Right, so every term that we have in the equation, we want to multiply the entire equation by the LCD. So by the lowest common denominator. Now, that means we need to find what the lowest common denominator of this problem is. So the first thing we need to do is focus on our denominators, specifically finding a common denominator for this problem. Now, Considering that our denominators are, met, are made up of polynomials, so it's a jumble of you know, numbers and letters, not just regular numbers. You know, if our denominators were something that looked like this, a third and a fifth, that would be a slightly different process. Here we have x terms and we have numbers and stuff, so it's a little bit different on how we do this process. When you're dealing with denominators that look like this, the one thing that you want to make sure is you want to make sure that all of your denominators are factored first. All right, so if I take a look at my first fraction, x minus 4, there's not really any way for me to factor x minus 4 any further. There is no greatest common factor here. I can't factor this uh, using FOIL or like anything like that. Same thing with x plus 1. There's just not anything that I can really do for those. The only denominator that I have here that actually can be factored is this one right over here. So this one here, we have x squared minus 3x minus 4. We can actually factor this pretty quickly here using what I call as reverse foil. So when we look at our first term, x squared, we know that that breaks up to x times x. Then we look at our last term, which is a 4, and we think what multiplies to get 4, but adds or subtracts to get 3. Well, the only way to get 4 is either 2 times 2 or 1 times 4. We want the combination of numbers that adds or subtracts to get 3, which means we want the 1 and the 4. Um, focusing on your signs, whatever sign your middle number has, you want that to go with the bigger number. So our middle term here is negative, which means the negative needs to go with the 4, which means this 1 is going to be positive. And remember, you want to backtrack and you want to double check. Make sure that they multiply to get your last term, add to get your middle term. Positive 1 times negative 4 is a negative 4. Positive 1 plus negative 4 is a negative 3. So it does all check out. And after we've done this, we need to take a look at all of our different denominators. We have x minus 4, x plus 1, and then over here, x plus 1 and x minus 4. But if you notice here, we just have x minus 4s and x plus 1. So those are the only two different types of denominators that we have. Right? There's nothing else. We don't have like x minus 8s. We don't have random numbers. It's literally x minus 4s and x plus 1. So our common denominator is actually going to be x plus 1 times x minus 4. Because every denominator could go into this. x minus 4 can fit in here. x plus 1 can fit in here. And then this can fit into itself, if that makes sense. So, in order to try and simplify this problem, to make it easier to solve, again, we want to multiply the entire equation by the lowest common denominator. So what that's going to look like is I'm going to take x plus 1 times x minus 4, and I'm going to multiply my entire problem by that. Okay. So I'm going to rewrite uh, this part here with my factored denominator instead. Okay. So we're going to take this and multiply it to everything inside our equation. So first things first, x plus 1 times x minus 4 times the 5 over x minus 4. So think about this this way, x plus 1 over times x minus 4 over 1. 
is getting multiplied to the 5 over x minus 4. Also remember a very important rule uh, that says if you have the same thing in the numerator as you have in your denominator, they cancel out. So when I'm doing this multiplication, this x minus 4 here can cancel with this x minus 4 here, leaving me with 5 times this x plus 1 there. Minus, our next multiplication is this times this, right, right over here. And in this instance, x minus 1 will cancel, I mean, x plus 1 here will cancel with this x plus 1 here, leaving me with the 8 times the x minus 4. And then that's going to equal to doing our last multiplication over here. The x plus 1 cancels with this x plus 1. x minus 4 cancels with this x minus 4, leaving me with just that 34 there. So that's how that works. Otherwise, we just need to continue doing some cleanup with our problem here. So we have this 5 that we can distribute. We also have this minus 8 that we can distribute. So 5 times x is 5x, plus 5 times 1 is 5. Negative 8 times x gives me negative 8x. Negative 8 times negative 4 is a positive 32. And that is going to equal 34. Combining like terms, 5x minus 8x is a negative 3x. 5 plus 32 gives me a 37, and that equals to 34. We're solving for x here, so we're going to subtract the 37 on both sides to give us negative 3x is equal to negative 3, and let me move this on up over here. For our last step, the only thing left to do to solve for x is to divide out your coefficient, so divide both sides by negative 3 to get that x is equal to 1. Otherwise, that's it for this problem.